Is Kubuntu 20.10 a worthy Windows 10 replacement in 2021? This is Headphones Neil the blog. A D N. It's Headphones Neil. So guys, Headphones Neil here with a slightly different kind of review in that this is something that's more on a personal note than it is um, any other sort of review um, and that I recently inherited a laptop so it is a little bit older so it has a regular um, hard drive with disk so I thought you know what I'll update the drive with an SSD see about improving performance installing a fresh copy of Windows but in thinking about it as a project that I've been thinking about for a while is um, instead of going with Windows why not give Linux another shot every couple of years I hear about how it's ha having another resurgence how it's getting better and it's a worthy desktop OS replacement so um, doing some research I was poking around for which one to install I came across different ones to use um, by going with the plain generally stable Debian using Ubuntu which is a little bit more which is a variant of Debian but a, has more um, features and functionality, a uh, slightly more polished UI, has more proprietary drivers and stuff like that. But from practice experience, I never really liked the UI on that. So um, I was checking out some of the very different variants for desktop environments. So there's, of course, GNOME for um, Ubuntu. There's a KDE for um, Kubuntu. There's a Cinnamon. Um, I forget which one Linux Mint has, which I think is, which might be Debian, but um, in the various, or basically just in reviewing it, I came, decided, or I settled on Kubuntu just because it generally has that UI feel of Windows 10, which is fine with me, but um, using Linux and Debian as the back end, um, I figured it has a more um, stable um, because it's based on Linux, it's supposed to be more stable. So the only thing from there is that because a lot of Linux software is more open source and um, more open source and generally not what you would buy for a Windows machine like, let's say, Microsoft Office or Photoshop and things like that, I got to thinking about some of the alternatives that are available to use. So for me, I've already used software like Audacity for audio editing, uh, GIMP for photo editing, um, software, and then as far as like uh, Microsoft Office alternatives, there's LibreOffice, which um, as far as which I use on and off over the years, but is a good open source variant in order to have word processing, spreadsheet, and basically those various things that Microsoft Office offers, but without the subscription, without um, having to buy Microsoft Office, but have all the same features and functionality. Um, as far as an email client goes, there's um, software like Thunderbird, Thunderbird, which is essentially uh, bare bones version of outlook or if you think of it as windows mail that's a little bit more of a maybe better comparison but but more something along the lines that's in the middle of the two so you don't necessarily get all the flashiness and plugins and all of that but thunderbird does offer add-ons to um mimic some of that functionality so all in all, this is all software that I've installed so far. Um, Linux does come pre-installed with some of that, notably LibreOffice and Firefox. So um, the Firefox web browser is a good um, alternative or a good browser to use if you're not a fan of Google Chrome. But the upside is that Google Chrome is available to install for Linux. Um, that's probably the only issue I had in installing the software that I've mentioned so far, notably Audacity, GIMP, um, and Thunderbird. Thunderbird was actually technically already installed, but 
Um, installing Audacity and GIMP are straightforward in the Kubuntu um, installation manager. Um, I did a search or I um, downloaded the installation file for Dropbox and I was able to install that um, pretty directly. So, so far all the software and functionality mimicked what I would get on a Windows machine. The only issue I had going back to web browsers is Google Chrome. So when I went in to try to install it, it gave me an error. So I did have to install it via the command line. So think of um, the command line or terminal on Linux as uh, Microsoft DOS, so the predecessor to Windows. So that's kind of the annoying thing, but if you do a Google search for installing Google Chrome on Linux, you get the command lines you need to install it. So you can essentially copy what they put from the website into a terminal window, which you essentially do by, if you have a Windows keyboard, just do click the Windows key, type the search for terminal and open it up. You can paste the installation um, text that you need to use to download the file and install Chrome. And once it installs, I think you do need to uh, give it your administrator password. But once you do that, Google Chrome is installed, you run it and you're good to go. It syncs your settings, history, passwords, all of that stuff. So um, essentially anything you can do in Chrome on Windows, you can do on Linux. So overall, it was a pretty seamless and smooth process. Chrome was the only thing that was a bit of a hiccup, but if you uh, decide to stick with Firefox, then you don't do not actually have to do anything. Um, if you don't use um, the password sync or some of the other um, extra features of Chrome, then you could actually technically use the open source variation of Chrome or open source version of Chrome called Chromium, which gives you all the web browsing features of Chrome, but none of the uh, maybe more advanced think features and then with the news that they're that Google's restricting some of the APIs to the Google Chrome web browser um, or maybe you don't like all the extra stuff that's in Chrome then Chromium might be the way to go and um, you can install it just like you would Audacity and GIMP when you go into the Kubuntu um, discover app to install the app search for Chromium and it'll come up and you just install it and you're all good to go so uh, with all that out of the way, um, as far as email goes, I mentioned Thunderbird is the open source version of uh, Microsoft Outlook. So for as you, uh, a Gmail user, you can add your Google, um, Gmail account into it. It'll load your email, sync it up. You can do it as IMAP or POP um, or POP3. And once you do that, you can now get your emails on your desktop. So you don't have to download or open up a web browser every time or you don't have to log in every time. Technically, you could do a shortcut to Gmail from Chrome or Firefox, whichever you prefer. But if you want something that's a little bit more offline or more local, then Thunderbird is the way to go. Um, as far as gaming goes, I have not tested too much as of yet, but um, um, uh, you do need to turn on hardware acceleration if you're going to use, for example, Google Stadia in Chrome just so you get a better performance from what I've been reading online. Um, so to do that, you do need to go into your Chrome flags, um, search for software rendering and turn or override software rendering in order to get around that because by default it's turned off. But so Stadia would still work, but from what I hear, the performance is kind of janky. So by ha using hardware acceleration, um, the performance is a little bit better. Now, now let's say you are a Steam user. You might be wondering, is Steam available for Linux? And the simple answer is yes. Um, I would recommend doing two things. The first thing is to install a service called Play on Linux. That allows you to um, have Windows compatibility or add Windows game compa uh, compatibility to Linux um, just because not all games might be compatible. Um, and then using a, and then configuring it using the latest wine layer. Um, basically that allows you to install any or a lot of Windows programs on a Linux distribution. Well, how well they work is not necess is um, up in the air still. There's a good number that work, but results might not all be very uh, consistent. Um, so from there, what I would, um, for, from there, what you will be able to do is install Steam. 
Oh, and before I, before I proceed, uh, Play on Linux and Steam are both available in the uh, Discover app to install both of those programs. So you've installed Play on Linux from Discover, now you'll install Steam. So you just search for Steam, hit install. Um, the first thing that um, Steam will do once you've installed it is to check for updates, install various um, background services and apps and things like that. So that way um, you can or it can run properly and um, it has all the files it needs to install games and um, have various security measures and things like that. So uh, once you do that, you'll be able to sign in, download games and all of that. Um, so far, I've been, I was able to test um, Counter-Strike Source and that seemed to work okay. I just did a quick server with myself in it and it seemed to run okay. Um, I also have tried installing um, Star Wars Old Republic, which seems to run. It is a bit sluggish, so I am still testing that. It might just be that the laptop I'm using is underpowered or the video card is not up to par as far as um, being able to run the game. So if that's the case, then I won't be able to play that. But um, I'm going to poke around and see if um, I can mess with the settings to... Um, reduce the requirements or see if I can get it to force using fewer requirements so that um, the game will play more smoothly but basically you should be able to install most games set up for Linux in order to um, play games on your um, Linux installation. Um, so from there the only thing other, only other program that I um, installed was Dropbox. I, I think I already mentioned that, but installation there was simple. It's simple, similar to Steam in that once you download it, it does need to install a few other items. Um, and then it'll be able to sync in the background, just load at startup, and your files will download and all of that. So pretty straightforward. So overall, my imp as far as initial impressions go, the boot time and overall um, performance are good. Apps are, or the boot time is fast, I think less than 15, 15 to 20 seconds. Apps load quickly. Uh, browsing, browsing is smooth, video performance is good. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no HD support on Linux machines as of yet, but I'm still poking around to see if there's a way around that. Um, the There's a built-in theming system, so if you want your UI to look like Windows or Mac or have various other colors and themes, you can set that up on a global scale or use various elements from different themes. So if you want the Windows to be one thing, your icons to be something else, you can do that. Um, and then in general, just if there's a Windows app, there's usually already um, the app available or there's an open source alternative. So basically everything, like I said, so Audacity, Dropbox, Chrome, and GIMP are already available. Um, Thunderbird is the Outlook um, alternative. And then LibreOffice is the Office altern or Microsoft Office alternative. Um, on Windows, you can now uh, view your no Android notifications on your desktop. So there's an app called or a service called KDE Connect. That's KDE. So you install an app on your Android smartphone, and then you load up the app or the program on your Linux desktop. You connect the two, and then you can view your Android notifications on your desktop. So that's also an option. So overall, there's a lot of equivalency between the two. Um, the main cons and downside that I saw so far is that the theming system seems um, inconsistent in that when you theme a global um, theme or use a global theme sometimes certain elements don't necessarily uh, seem to um, carry through through all the elements so like the um, menu bars are gone or the some icons don't get themed properly so um, it feels like um, it's not, not, not necessarily everything was well thought out or maybe it's incompatibility or an old theme or something along those lines. So, um, just a heads up there, but you can all, but because the, uh, but that goes back to my, the upside of the theming system is that if you like a window system, but an icon doesn't change, you can always change the icon pack to something else. So to one that works, so your icons are complete. Um, and then the other downside is what I already mentioned, the Google Chrome installation was manual, so you had to use a terminal and type out or copy and paste the command lines in order, or commands to get it installed. 
Um, so you have to be willing to take that risk and be okay with doing that. Um, if you're not doing that, it kind of makes it a hassle to want to do that, to have to do that manually. It would be nice to be able to, or it would be nice if we did that um, on its own or instead of having to do it manually. So um, it's one of those things where it would have been nice that it did it on its own. So, um, but that's neither, neither here nor there. It works. You can get it installed. You just have to do it manually. So something to keep in mind for that. So that's all there is for this particular review. Um, I just wanted to give my thoughts. I've been using it for a few days now. Overall installation was fast um, as far as getting it installed. It um, mimics Windows 10 very very nicely. So if you've installed Windows even 7 or 10, either one, then installing Kubuntu or even Ubuntu um, is going to be a pro about the same. You get you set up your, your administrator password, your user password, set up a new user. It gives you a certain walkthrough elements when you're set using um, the system for the first time. Um, and basically that's about it. I want to say that it was a lot easier than I remember. Um, installing stuff is pretty easy. It does seem to ask for a password when installing stuff a lot more than I remember, but to me that's not really a big issue. Um, most drivers seem to work okay. Um, the update system for programs and hardware drivers seems to be pretty fully featured. Um, so once you've installed stuff and you hit reboot, then everything should be... Um, pretty good so that's all there is for this review so if you want to give your own feedback or thoughts or comments or have some questions you can always find me on twitter at patel n01 the website's patel n01.com for past episode subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff but that's all there is for this particular um, review and initial takes on linux uh, thanks for tuning in and until next bye